Asr Salah. So inshallah, Asr Salah will be our final uh, takbir that we do after the mandatory prayers because why? We want to be in sync with the Hujjad. They are doing the takbirat there, we are doing the takbirat here, and it is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there's many things that we learn from these days, from these blessed days, because for, you know, after a long time, since the month of Ramadan, we went back to our work, we indulged ourselves into our career, into our lives, and then finally we take a step back, and then we take some time off if we can, um, if we can take some, you know, we use the time that we do have off, and we spend that time with our families, with our loved ones, with our friends, and one of the things that we realize, that we take back, and there's many lessons to be learned, but one of the things that we can learn from this is that many times we are too busy and we are too indulged and we are too, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in, into our lives, into our career, and that we ignore everything else. You know, we have, mashallah, many of us have parents, many of us have children, many of us have other family members that we love to spend time with. And what ends up happening is that we get so busy with our lives that a day comes, we get a phone call, and it's too late because the person that we love, the person that we wanted to spend time with has already gone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have already gone to the And how many times do we experience this? How many times do we have friends who tell us or maybe cry that they wanted to spend more time with their father or their mother or their son or their daughter or their grandfather, whoever it may be. And so one of the things that we realize in these days is the importance of the people that are around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us. If you have a parent, if you have a friend that loves you, if you have a wife, if you have somebody that loves you and you love them back, wallahi, it is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you didn't have that person, then something part of you would be missing. And so one of the things that we understand is our life sometimes become too busy. We get too caught up. And so we need to take this decision upon us for the future. And we really, every time, you know, we set our schedule, every time, uh, you know, we get too busy and, and we think that materialistic. And what happens is the world around us lets us think and gives us this information, this misunderstanding, this misinformation that if we have more things, we will become happier, right? If we go and we become more successful in this world, we will receive or will achieve happiness. But true happiness is received through what service of people, through spending time with people, through building our and connecting our hearts with one another. And so inshallah, as we are moving forward, one of the lessons that we want to take from these days is that moving forward in our life, we want to make this a note that when we have time off, when we can get time off and we try to get time off, we spend some time with the people that we love. We spend some time with our families and we appreciate them and we tell them and we appreciate them and we show them that we appreciate them. Why? Because they are only in our lives for a limited amount of time. The more that we can spend with them, the more benefit, inshallah, we can get. Because no matter how successful we, we, we become, if we are alone, if you are on top, but you are alone, you are alone. There's nobody there with you. You will feel as lonely as anybody can feel. You know, the poorest of the poor person, if they have people around them and the richest of, of the richest person doesn't have anybody, you rather be the poorest because that person is happy. That person is fulfilled. One of the fulfillments is that we spend time with the people that we love and that is one of our fulfillments. And so as we are going uh, and finishing these days, we want to take this as a part of our life. We want to consciously make this decision that in the future, Future, inshallah, I am going to give more uh, value and I'm going to spend more time with those people that I love. And again, this is a, a, a form of us uh, joining our hearts and us really and truly recognizing ourselves. Because as human beings, in order to recognize ourselves, we must be interacting with other human beings. Otherwise, if we are interacting with a machine all day, we become like a machine, right? So we have consciousness, we have these things. And the, 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 the reality is that we need this interaction. We need to appreciate the people that we have around us, inshallah. Today, I actually want to talk about a different topic, just, uh, just this lesson, inshallah, that we go with. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us many of these beautiful qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has in its full form, you know, all of the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses, it's in its complete form. However, as human beings, He has given us a few of those qualities in its uh, uh, form that it is very, uh, in a shortcoming form, you know, in its form that we have a little bit of that. And so we have the manifestation of sabr, we have the, man you know, patience, we have the manifestation of rahmah, compassion, mercy, these are qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only gave to what? The human beings. He didn't give these qualities to any other creation. He didn't give these qualities to the angel. Yes, the, the, the animals have some of these qualities, but they do not possess all of the qualities that human beings possess. But at the same time, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us these qualities, He said, these qualities that you have, they are all imperfect. The fact that we are human beings means that we are made imperfect. The, the thing that makes us perfect is our imperfection, right? Because if you are a perfect being, then you are an angel. You're no longer a human being. And so the idea is that all of our life, we take these qualities and we try to complete them. We try to get better in every single one of these qualities. We try to further ourselves and the qualities that we lose you know, because of society, because as a child, you're born with all of these beautiful uh, qualities. You know, it is natural for the child to have these. But because the society around us makes us uh, uh, such a person that we turn into a stone. You know, we, our hearts become hard. And so some of these qualities we need to reintroduce to ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the beautiful things that He gave us is that He gave us the ability to return back to Him whenever we can. You know, one of the uh, one of the major uh, things that we have as part of our nature is that we are imperfect and because of that we sin all the time. Whether it be minor sin, whether it be a major sin, whatever it may be, whether it be a small bad habit, whether it be a continuously big habit, whatever it is, all of us have something that we need to work on, that we want to work on, that we should work on and we can always better ourselves. You know, the first, one of the first stories that we find in the Quran is the story of Adam alayhi salam, Adam and Iblis. And yes, the story is about Adam alayhi salam sinning, but the emphasis is not on the sin, the emphasis is on the tawbah, right? The emphasis is on him returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The emphasis is him given the ability to again return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wipe his slate clean and Adam alayhi salam and his wife. And so this, this is one of the emphasis that we find in the story of Adam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, look, you have shaitan that is there. Shaitan is going to influence you. There is going to be times when you will slip. Right? There's going to be times when you slip, but the idea is that every time you do slip, what do you do? You should turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave these words as a blessing to Adam alayhi salam so he can return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the Quran, when we find the story of Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he slipped. فَأَزَلَّهُمْ الشَّيْطَانِ Shaytan made them slip. You know, Shaytan made them do... He doesn't say Adam alayhi salam committed a sin, he's a bad person. He never says that. That is never mentioned in the Quran. What is mentioned in the Quran is that his natural self, the human being, he followed his nature and eventually he fell into sin. But the thing that's emphasized is he turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَتَلَقَى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted him. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned a very beautiful hadith. He said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَوْ لَمْ تَذْلِبُونَ That I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do not sin, and listen to this hadith, very interesting wording. If you do not sin, then لَذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely take you away from this world. وَلَجَاءَ بِقَوْمٍ آخر, And He will bring about another group of people. And what will they do? They will fall into sin and then they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. The scholar ever mentioned in this tashrih, in the explanation of this hadith, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying it's okay to sin. Rather, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is letting us know that what you are doing is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You repeatedly falling into sin, don't think and don't become despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in reality, this is why you were created. This was the test. 
The test was that everything is going to be imperfect. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be times when you need to be patient. There's times when you are happy. There's times when you need to have other qualities that manifest. So this is the actual test. If everything was perfect, then there would be no test. If there was no person to feed or give money to, then who would we give uh, a charity to? If there is nobody to help, then who would we go help and earn reward? We wouldn't have any reward if there was nothing to be earned, right? And so the idea, the concept is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already told us, look, I have made the angels, right? Angels are perfect, right? I have made the animals and the animals, they do whatever they want. They're not held accountable. Why? Because they do not have the ability to know what is right and what is wrong many times. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will create you as a human being and I will give you some of the qualities that I have with me, I will manifest those qualities within you, and your struggle, your end goal is to try to perfect those qualities. Even though we don't reach perfection, but we continue on trying. And the beautiful thing that you will notice, you know, when in this world, when you have a relationship with somebody and you get into a fight, a lot of times when you make up after that fight, and remember, we should always make up, when you make up, you realize you come closer sometimes than you did, than you were before. And so the same idea, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know the more that we ask forgiveness, the closer we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this world, when you keep on asking somebody repeatedly, what happens? They get bothered, they get uh, you know troubled from you, you know, they get annoyed of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell us? You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us a beautiful example to help us understand. You know, when you have a child, right, you give them something. Like let's say you have a child, you give them a box of candy. And the child comes and he gives you one candy out of that box. Even though you gave it to the child, it's yours, right? But when the child comes and gives you that, how happy does the father or the mother or the, the, the uncle or whoever it is, how happy do you feel that? Look at this child, he's sharing, he's coming and giving it to me, even though you don't need it. We don't need that candy, right? But we love it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even becomes more happy than you know, and he gave us an example, it's a very good example. He said that a person, he's traveling in the desert and he only has one animal. That animal has everything that he owns, all the water, all the food, and everything that he needs to survive is on that animal. What happens? The person falls asleep and the animal leaves. The person wakes up and the animal is gone. Now he's in the middle of the desert, obviously there's no phones, there's not, no technology, he has no way to even survive, nowhere to get anywhere to even ask for help. There is no way out for this person. He's completely lost hope. What happens? He goes back to sleep, he falls asleep for a little bit, he wakes up and all of a sudden, the animal is right there, right in front of him. This person completely lost hope in his life. The, the biggest uh, uh, loss that we can have is losing hope in our life, right? So he was at the bottom. What happened? All of a sudden, everything went back to the top. He becomes so happy, the Prophet وسلم, said that he utters words of blasphemy. He doesn't mean to utter it, but he's so happy that he says words that he doesn't mean. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even becomes more happy when a servant turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because everything we have is from Allah. And all the amana, that, it is the amana, you know, all of the, the, the hands, the feet, the eyes, all of these blessings that we have, people around us, you know, all of the good qualities, these are all blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave it to us, he doesn't need it back. But at the same time, just like a child goes to his parent, if we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say? He becomes so happy, he becomes so excited that he says, I will forgive you. I will forgive my servant. Why? Because he turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you find this from the Sahaba and the scholars. They say that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts one deed, just one deed of mine, that is enough because on the day of judgment, I will go and argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I did this and you accept this, now put me in Jannah. Why? Because the mercy is so vast. The mercy is so vast that so no matter how big our sin is, you know, Shaytan plays this psychological game with us. And this is the strongest game that when we fall into a sin, what does he do? Oh, you're not good enough. Go and sin more. You're not good enough? What? 
So what happens, the person, when you feel bad for sinning, what do you do? You fall into the sin again. You know, you have, um, uh, uh, you know, drug, uh, drugs and anonymous and, and, and dementia, people who are addicted, what happens? When they do something, when, 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 they, when, when, when they take the, a little bit of their addiction, they want more, right? If there's no turning back, if there's nothing to go back to, you just dig yourself deeper and deeper into the grave or into the hole. And so the idea Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that don't become of those people who think, you know, we're, we're too sinful for Allah to forgive me. You know what? I'm always falling into sin. Maybe it's not meant for me. Maybe, you know, I just forget. I, I give up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ He was traveling, he passed away in the middle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went and told the angels, you know, the angels of, of Nar and Jannah were fighting. The, the angels of Nar said, no, he's a sinner, he should be in hellfire. The angels of Jannah said, no, he should be in Jannah, he should be in paradise. Why? Because he was going to go repent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, go measure the ground. See if he's closer to his old destination or he's closer to his new destination. If he's closer to his old destination, then he will not be forgiven. If he's closer to his new destination, then he will be forgiven. It is mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved the ground because he was closer to the original destination. Why? So that when the angels went and measured it, he was actually closer to the destination he was going and that is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we get these whispers or somebody tells us or we hear this from a speaker that, you know, you can, if you have gone this far, then you've gone too far. Know that this is from shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تقنتوا من رحمة الله. You know, in the Akbar al-Kaba'ir, you know, you have the, the sins and then you have the Kaba'ir, the major sins, and then you have Akbar al-Kaba'ir, the most major sins. One of the sins is actually giving up hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if we sin and we give up hope in the mercy of Allah, we are just falling into another major sin. And so we need to understand that when we do sin, there is always return. There is always return. There is no time. There is no time. And as long as you are alive, as long as you are breathing, you know, in the in, in Surah Baqarah, when Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qala wa min dhuriyati, qala la ilaha wa dhalimi. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, we'll make you an imam, a leader, he said, what about my generation, my future generation, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yalalu ahdil zalimeen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise does not reach those who are wrongdoers. So Ibrahim alayhi salam went and asked dua again, because why? He wants to keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's negotiating with Allah, right? And then what does he say the second time he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for dua? وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَرَزُقَاهَا وَمِنَ ثَمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُ and give everything to those who believe in Allah. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reply? قَالَ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا ثُمَّ أَقْطَرُ He said, whoever disbelieves, even if you disbelieve every single day, I will still give you a chance. I will still give you a chance till you come to me, till you pass away. Ibrahim alayhi salam, it is mentioned that he would never eat alone. He would never eat alone. So one day he went and he called somebody to go and eat with him. And that person came and sat down and that person is praying to his uh, uh, you know, idols or whatever that person was doing. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam found this disturbing and so he told that person that you don't believe in God. Okay, if you don't believe in God, then you cannot eat with me. Then you cannot eat with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down word to Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. How can you reject my servant that I've been feeding for 40 years? 40 years, every single, you know, every single breath is at one second, right? 40 years, how many seconds? He said, I've been feeding him for 40 years and he's been disobeying me. Yeah, I've been feeding him for 40 years and he doesn't believe in me and I still feed him. Who are you to reject my servant? Who are you to go and reject? And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam a lesson so that we can learn, right? Because we are the product, we are the people that are learning that lesson from Ibrahim alayhi salam. So no matter where we are, we always turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, every time in the Quran there comes about sinners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِنَ صَيْهِ Why? Except for those who return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there, as long as you are alive, there is always an exception. As long as you are alive, the return is always there. And again, what are these tawbas? The scholars have mentioned a few different maratib, a few different stages, and inshallah we'll go through uh, those stages of tawbah. Now, again, as we move on, we want to make sure that we are going on the higher stage, right? As we continue on, we always want to go on the higher stage. 
the, the, the first stage of Tawbah that the scholars mention is Tawbah to Kufar min al Kufr, that when a person is a disbeliever, their Tawbah, all they need to do in order to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to accept Islam, to denounce their Kufr. And we know the story many Sahabas who became Muslim, they passed away either in battle or whatever right away and they didn't do anything. They didn't physically do any prayers or, you know, do any of the ahkamat or any of, fulfill any of the fara'id. And these people were blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because their tawbah was just becoming Muslim. Right? When somebody becomes Muslim, they, they're not expected to follow everything from day one. You slowly learn, right? So the tawbah is al-kufar min al-kufr. You know, if, the, if the, the person has a disbeliever, if all they do is believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they pass away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their tawbah because whatever before it happens, it is all forgiven. You know, in prisons, and they, they have recorded this, that the, 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 the highest, the, the, the religion that ha is having the most converts or reverse is Islam. And they say, you know why? Because Islam is the only religion across the board, it's the only religion that you can turn Muslim and you can get, get all of your sins forgiven. All of your behind, all of your past sins. There is no other religion that gives you this ability to erase all of your bad deeds of the past the way Islam does. And so in prisons, those people that do not have a second chance, their only second chance is in the Akhirah. Why? Because they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this world, you know, we were in prison, but we don't want to be in prison in the next world. Why? Because we want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't care about people forgiving them in this world. They care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiving them. And that forgiveness is there available. And so what do they do? They accept this Islam and so this is very interesting uh, concept that we find the second tawbah is tawbah al mukhlis min al dunubi wal kaba'ir is the tawbah of a sincere person that what do they do tawbah from they do from dunub and kaba'ir so whatever sins they fall into they go and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, those people that whenever الَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ That those who whenever they fall into a bad deed, whenever they do something wrong, right away their conscience remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because their heart is still connected, right? Their heart is still connected. And you know what? One of the beautiful aspects of how our heart being connected, you know people say, I'm not getting any better. I'm not getting any better. You know, I keep falling into sin. The fact that you are coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that you are asking for tawbah, that is you getting better. That is the acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think that you have to completely change in order to be accepted. No, the fact that you have the ability to return to Allah in itself, that is the biggest blessing. The fact that we have the ability to return and that is the biggest blessing. And so the, the, the second one or the second category of those people that fall into major sins that have maybe bad habits that they want to get rid of. But what is it every single time they commit a sin, every time they, 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 slip, they slip, every time they fall into something, what do they do? They turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them. And if the person does this entire life, entire life they continue the cycle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continuously forgive this person in entire life. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said on the day of judgment, Ya ibn Adam, inna kama da'awtani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ala ma kana fi wa la ubali. That a person, whenever you ask, whenever you ask forgiveness, as long as you are hopeful in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, I will forgive all of your sins. And even if you come with qirab al ard even if you come with the earth and the heavens full of sins, meaning you have sinned all your life, but at the same time, you keep turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You keep turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? I will give you the amount of sins that you have. I will change them into good deeds. I will change them into good deeds. And this is very beautiful. The scholars say that when you do a bad deed, that these people who do bad deeds and then they feel bad, so they do tawbah and then they go and do a good deed. They go and do a good deed. What that, what that does is that not only gives them the good deed afterwards, but it replaces the bad deed with the good deed. So you are blessed with two things. One is that the bad deed is taken away, 
And then also, when you do a good deed, you do tawbah and you do a good deed, the, the bad deed is replaced with another good deed on top of the good deed that you have already earned of what you did. And again, this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because see, the doors are always open. He's trying to give us chances over chances over chances that look, just take this one step. You know, take this one step. We find in the hadith that if we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walking, He will come to us running. What is that? What, what concept is He trying to instill in us? The idea yeah, he's saying even if you try a little bit, then I will try. Meaning the doors of God are wide open. The doors of God are wide open. You just give it a little bit of try and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the blessing to continue. Let's continue on with a few more maratib and then we'll conclude. The third one is tawbah al-udul min as And then this is the tawbah udul. You know, you have the seven people. Seven people that will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imamun adilun. A person that is just. So udul are those people that are very just. Us, those people that treat people good, those people that are very conscious of what they are doing, what they are saying, and what do they do to about? Mina salahir. Why? Because they stay away from kabair. So their biggest sins, their main thing is to take away their smaller bad habits. Because alhamdulillah, they were able to completely cut off all of the bigger bad habits, which are the kabair, which is the major, uh, the major sins. And the Prophet sallallahu also mentions that yahmilu hadha al-ilm min kulli qarin uduluhu that. You know, from every generation, those that are upright, those that are just, either means that is just. And why, why do we need to be just? Because we are in charge of what our families. All of you are shepherds. You all have a flock. Whoever it is, whether it's one child, whether it's your family, whatever it is, you are in charge of those people. And so you have to have justice in order for you to be upright because those people are under you and those people who are under you, they deserve your justice. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, told us that those people who are just in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that that they will actually have the honor to actually carry the message of Islam. They will be those people that will carry it from one person or another. Those who are upright, those who are just. And then you have the fourth category, Tawbatul Abidina Min Al Fatawat. This is the tawbah of those who are continuously worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are continuously worshipping, what do they do tawbah from? They ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive their shortcomings. Why? Because they feel like they couldn't do enough. They feel like what they did was not enough. They feel like they need to do more. They feel like they have because they feel like they couldn't do enough. They feel like what they did was not enough. They feel like they need to do more. They feel like they have a certain goal that they need to reach and they haven't reached that goal. And so they, because of their laziness, because of their uh, you know, tiredness, whatever it may be, they're not able to do certain things. And then so ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them the ability to do more. And then you have the fifth step, which is tawbatu salikina min ilal al-qulubi wal-afad. This is the salik. Who is the salik? The salik is somebody that takes upon a, a spiritual journey. You know, we spoke about the spiritual journey that we need to embark. And so somebody who is consciously embarking this journey and consciously uh, measuring themselves to see they are going higher and higher in the ranks of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning they are clearing their hearts. And what is their main focus? Min ilal qulubi wal afad. They focus on their hearts. They focus min ilal qulubi wal afad. They focus on their hearts. They focus on the internal diseases of the heart. They focus on what they are saying to people, how they are affecting people. If there is backbiting people, if they are saying something wrong about somebody. You know, there is a story in Umar radiallahu anhu, and we all know Ibn Umar who was uh, a sahabi that wanted to follow every footstep of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as close as he can. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu mentions that a person came, we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah we'll conclude with this. A person came and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this is a person of Jannah. This is a person of Jannah. And this was normal. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sometimes see somebody and he would be like this person. And the idea was to somebody to go and find out what makes this a person of Jannah so that we can know. And alhamdulillah, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, because of his curiosity, because of his love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because of his commitment to this religion, he actually found out for us so that we can know today. He says that I, go to, I went to this person I told him, you know, my parents kicked me out. So can I stay with you for a few days? And the Arabs, you know, they have hospitality. So he said, of course, you know. So he had Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu come over and stay with him for a few days. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu mentioned that I didn't see anything special from this person except for two rakats that he used to pray at night time and so on and so forth. And so he went and he asked that person. 
Finally, he just gave up. He said, I didn't see anything special, so I wanted to ask that person. He said, what do you do that the Prophet said, you are a Jannati. The Prophet you said, uh, are a person that was guaranteed paradise. What is that, that deed that you do that gave you that status? So you know what he said? He said, every night before I go to sleep, every night before I go to sleep, I sit there and I clear my mind and my heart from all the hatred, from all the bad things that I did that day. Uh, you know, anything, anybody that did something to me, I forgive them. I pardon them. And I go to sleep with a completely clean heart. There's nothing in my heart. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted from this man because it was coming from his heart. It was sincere. You know, we all know the story of, uh, 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 you know, whether it's a female prostitute or it's a man uh, who was a big sinner. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they went to a well and they found a dog who was uh, thirsty. And what did they do? They took out their sock and they gave water to that dog. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this. This deed that you did, it was done from the sincerity of your heart. You didn't do it for any other person. You weren't expecting a reward. You weren't expecting compensation. You just did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted that deed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to really and truly keep turning back to Him and become of those people that are ta'ibun because we are always going to sin. But the idea is that we are always returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who return back to him and so we want to become of those who are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our tawbahs may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to further ourselves in this journey that we want to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our spiritual body before we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that when we go there we are ready to meet subhanahu wa ta'ala ونشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا مولانا محمد العبد ورسول صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى وإذ تأذن ربكم لإن شكرتم لأزيدنكم ولإن كفرتم إن عذابي لشديد Just one quick announcement إن شاء الله uh, This Saturday as we have every Saturday for the past two weeks we have uh, Brother Abu Taha him and his wife uh, will be giving just basic lessons to our teenagers or young uh, young kids from ages around four or five all the way to 14 inshallah so they will be teaching them basic duas you know basic aqidah uh, all of the things that, that that they need to know inshallah in order to learn their islamic identity and so if you want to bring your kids we do have this session or we are going to have the session tomorrow after asr so is at 5 30 so we will have it every saturday after unless we say we do unless we cancel most of the saturdays we'll have it inshallah so if you do have children and if you want to come bring them and attend yourself inshallah. Jazakallah khair. I will call you Hada. I will stop for the Bahari. What I call you, Sadi.